Okay, so we are learning the distance formula today. So by the end of class, students should be able to apply the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two points. So this is your distance formula right here. Now that being said, we are going to apply this to every single rule. So here we go. The distance formula is used to find the distance between two points. So most of the time you want, it doesn't matter which points. Majority of the time you're going to be trying to find the hypotenuse. Now, if they want to find the distance of B here, it would be Y2 minus Y1 because we are traveling vertically. Okay, so you want to take all your vertical axes, which is Y, and to find the distance of A right here, we would want to take all of our x values because it is horizontal. Now, here's where it gets tricky is to find the C value because we don't really know it's going up. It is vertical and horizontal. So that is exactly where this distance formula comes into play. You want to deal with your x values and your y values. So before adding a picture into this, we are going to deal with just points, nothing else. So we've got find the distance between points two, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4, 4. Now, I personally like to make my x's one color and my y's another color. It just helps me keep everything organized. Now, I need to write my square root. Okay, now I can go through and highlight, well, my x2 is negative 4 minus my y x1 which is negative 2 squared. Now, notice that there are two sets of parentheses around my negative numbers. Anytime you put a negative, you must put it in parentheses. Okay, and then we're going to have, so we have our big subtractions in here, our plus here, our parentheses. This is the foundation, everything that is bolded. This is the foundation of your formula. So, and even to make this a little bit more understandable and more color coordinated, I'm going to keep my X's and my Y's the same color. So now, I've got my Y2 which is 4 minus y1, which is negative 3. And we know negatives must be in parentheses. And we cannot forget to square this as well. Now, here's the thing. At first, when you look at this, it's kind of like, whoa, that is a lot going on that is very overwhelming. Just remember your simple PEMDAS rules, okay? This will help you understand and break down different parts of it without getting overwhelmed. So what I personally like to do, now you can see here I'm going to show you on the iPad calculator. Okay, you've got negative 4 minus negative 2. Okay, so this gets me... I like to break it down step by step. I've got negative 2 squared. Plus, I'm going to go ahead and look at my parentheses first. 4 minus negative 3 plus 7 squared. I don't have to put that 7 in parentheses. I normally just do because it really helps me be able to understand and see what I am doing by each and every single step. Now, I've done all my parentheses. Okay, just for those of you that need a little bit of a refresher. Oops. 
Okay. Um, I've done everything in parentheses. Now on to my exponents. Okay, remember, if you need to type in a negative exponent, use parentheses. So now we've got negative 2 squared is 4 plus 7 squared is 49. 49 plus 4 gets me, let's go ahead and move this up square root of 53. Now, I can find the square root of 53. So 53 and the square root button. So here you have two options for your answer. You can either write square root of 53 or you can write it in a decimal form. 7.28. Let's round right there. I suggest you leave it as your square root. It is, the, it is a more simple way instead of having all of those decimals. Now, when we go through and do distance formula, let's, let's choose colors again. Okay, I'm going to go with my X is going to be pink again, and my Y's are going to be blue again. Notice that the first set right here, these are my X1, Y1. They both match, they both have a one. These right here are my X2, Y2. They have the same exact value. So now we've got my distance formula. Remember, it makes it a lot easier if you just copy and paste this up at the top. The thing I also love about this formula right here is it's color coordinated, so it helps us with all of that confusion. So now I'm gonna put in the basics for my formula. This helps me make sure that the only thing left I have to do is plug in my numbers where they go. That part is a lot easier than having to figure out what goes where. So we've got x2, which is 5, x1, which is 1, y2, which is 7, and y1, which is 3. Now, yet again, we want to break this down step by step. So if we have parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication, division, then addition, subtraction. So let's look at everything in my parentheses first, okay? This is where you're going to go ahead and 5 minus 1 equals 4. I know I'm plugging it in the calculator. It's always good to double check. It's never a bad thing to use the calculator and double check. Now, 7 minus 3, okay, is 4 as well. Okay, notice I'm keeping them in parentheses just so I can make sure I'm keeping everything together and organized. Now, I'm going to move on to my next step, which is every my exponents. Actually, let's go over here, cross out my parentheses. It's done. Now, I'm on to exponents. So, 4 squared is 16. Lucky for us they are the same number. So 16 plus 16. Now always double check. 16 plus 16 is 32. So we've got square root of third, oops, square root of 32. Now you can try and plug that in the calculator. Let's see if we get anything. 5.65. Mm. Now Here's our options. We can go ahead and leave it as third square root of 32, or we can go back and say it is 5.65. Like I said, you can choose either. Your best option is keep it as a square root. Most people and most math teachers would prefer that it is as a square root. So now, 
you will do the same thing for number three. Numbers, now we are graphing, okay? Here's where we are graphing, so it gets a little bit different. Make sure you're copying and pasting your formula up at the top. So you make sure that nothing has gone wrong. Okay, now the first thing that I want to do, my very first step, is to identify the two points. Okay, here we go. We've got point one, which is at negative two, five. I apologize, those numbers are so small and so hard to read. And we've got P2, so is at 4, 1. Okay, now we can put here P1 is at negative 2, 5. And P2 is at 4, 1. Okay, from there... All I want to do is plug my numbers into the formula like I have done previously. So let's choose here. These can be... Now here's the thing. If you notice, I colored mine by X's as one color and Y's as another. If you notice up here, they have... These two, the two values, okay, are one color, and the ones are another, okay? You can do it either way as long as you keep it in this order. So for the sake of this, let's try it their way. These will be our blue values. Oh. Ones. These will be our blue values, and these will be our red values. So now, we're going to go ahead and have parentheses minus parentheses squared plus parentheses minus parentheses squared. Do you have to do it this way? No. Can you write the formula as it comes up and as you are moving through? Of course. I just like to know that my structure is set up properly before I move on. So now let's start with my x2. My two values are red. So my x2 is going to be 4. Okay, this is my x2 and my y2. And my x1 and y1 are in blue. So my x1... Make sure because it's a negative, I'm putting it in parentheses. Now I'm going to go back to my y2, which is 1, and my x or y1. So my y2 is 1, my x, my y1 is 5. I'm sorry. See, I'm getting myself confused here with my x's and y's. Once you do it over and over again, it starts to get a little bit confusing. So now, same thing. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Parentheses, make sure you go through. Here we go. I'm going to show you with the calculator again. Never hurts. Okay, 4 minus negative 2 equals 6. Okay, so we have 6 squared plus 1 minus 5 is negative 4 squared. 6 squared is 36. Let's go ahead and move this over a little bit so I've got more room. Okay, so I've got 36 plus, remember if it's going to be a negative that is squared, put it in parentheses is 16. That makes sense because a negative times a negative is a positive. So we've got 16 plus 36. Uh-oh, oops. 16 plus 36 is 52. So we now have that our answer is the square root of 52. If you were looking for the decimal of that, it would be 7.21. 
The only difference between graphing is you have to identify the points here. They don't give them to you. The rest of it is the same. Okay. Now, make sure you do the U try on your own. Okay. And here is the same exact as above. Okay. So your points are going to be P1 is negative 2, negative 1. And point 2 is 2, comma 4. So there you go. You may now go ahead and continue.